Hey, hello everyone. Sorry for not uploading videos since last few weeks, but just want to update you all that I recently shifted to Tokyo and joined here as a DevOps engineer. So it was a bit busy settling down over here. So yeah, let's get back to our agenda for today. That is what is DevOps? What is the DevOps life cycle? And what all technologies are included in the DevOps tech stack? So overall, we will go through the DevOps roadmap. Just forget one thing to inform you that I will be announcing the winner for a question asked by me on Insta yesterday. That is what is DevOps. Thank you all for responding there. So now we'll start with our topic for today. Let's talk about the life cycle of DevOps. Here we have two things that is Dev and Ops. And the life cycle includes planning phase, coding, building, testing, then deploy to the servers, operating those servers, and finally monitoring those applications. So we overall we have two teams, that is the development and operations team. So let's talk about the role of the development team. So they are mostly responsible for developing the app, testing the app locally in their environment. Then what operation team does, they deploy on the servers, they maintain those servers. So as shown in the diagram here, DevOps lies in between these two or we can say it is the integration of both these teams. Let's talk about the first phase, that is the planning phase. For example, let's say company got the requirement to build an app where user can purchase the books. So they need to plan about the infrastructure. They need to plan which all programming language they can use to develop this application. So now comes the role of the developers. So they can develop the app in any programming language of their choice. Either it can be Java or it can be Python. Once the app is built, they will push the code to Git repo or any source version control system. We as a DevOps engineer, no need to know how the code was developed, but we need to know how the code works, what all dependencies are there to run this code, what all services are configured to make this code work. Till this point, we have a developer who developed the code and tested it locally. But we want that this code should be accessible to the end users. So how it can be accessible? So for that purpose, we need to deploy this application onto the production servers. So nowadays, most of the production servers are Linux-based operating system. So it can be either on the on-prem or on the cloud. So to deploy these applications or monitor these applications on the Linux-based servers, we need to have a basic understanding of Linux fundas like basic Linux commands, understanding of Linux file system, bit of networking like DNS configuration, IP configurations, how we can configure those details onto the Linux servers. Basically, as a DevOps engineer, we need to know about the Linux command line tools. Now again, you don't need to deep dive into the Linux Sunfra because we have a separate team dedicated for that purpose who are handling issues related to the system reboot is hanging or say at all uh, system is not responding. So those kind of issues, IT infra team can handle. We just need to know how to maintain those servers. Nowadays, most of the app are being deployed onto the containers. We have different container technologies available in market like Docker or Container D. So you need to know how virtualization works. I have shared a snap in my Insta post where I have shared the details also how containers is different from the virtual machines. Go check that out. At this stage, we have a developer who developed the code. We have Linux servers where we need to deploy the applications to make it accessible to the end users. But so let's get back to what is the technology stack being used in the DevOps? So the first technology which I can say we need to learn is the Linux infra. That is Linux command line tools. Since most of the apps are now being deployed onto the containers, we need to create a Docker file in which we have all the instructions how, on how to deploy these applications. So to maintain those Docker files, we will store them onto the Git repo. So we need to have knowledge on the source version control system. Let's say 
git i hope till now you are clear so here we have the developer who developed the code who tested the app locally onto his machine he pushed the changes onto the git repo now to deploy those applications onto the dev server or onto the prod server we need to have a ci cd pipeline configured which can take the latest changes from the git repo build the package out of it using the tools like maven or npm then build the docker image and push on to the docker hub so all these steps that is getting the latest change from the git repo building the app and creating the docker image out of it pushing the latest changes on to the docker hub all those things can be done in a single pipeline we have a scripted or declarative pipeline that that will deploy our app on to the containers so the third thing which we need to learn is about the jenkins jenkins that is ci cd pipeline so once we have the latest image with all the changes in the code we need to deploy those latest images on to the dev server or on to the prod server since we have multiple servers like dev or prod we need to have same kind of configuration on all to the servers so there comes the infrastructure as a code or configuration management tools like terraform or ansible so depending on the type of project you are handling you need to decide whether you want to use infrastructure as a code or configuration management tools so in infrastructure as a code we have terraform then in the configuration management tool we have ansible chef okay so all the setup ready we need to know some kind of monitoring tools to monitor our app let's say fire a alert when storage is more than 60% used so that last moment it should not be a problem for us or even for the end user if we go out of the storage limit so there comes the prometheus tool for monitoring the app and grafana to visualize the logs many companies nowadays are using virtual infrastructure so you need to know one of the cloud services offerings either from aws or from gcp or from azure anything is fine just to get start with it so there you need to know the services related to infra management like how to create a infrastructure how to create dns of configurations on top of that so those kind of services you need to know now we need to orchestrate our applications so application downtime is not there for users so there comes the concept of kubernetes which helps to manage the containers much effectively apart from that for small automations like the backup or mail notifications or for cron job scheduling we need to know os specific uh, script like uh, that is shell script or uh, even we can learn python or nowadays for cloud providers we are mostly using golang to summarize all of this we have a developer who wrote the code tested the changes locally and pushed the latest changes onto the git repo we have a jenkins pipeline configured that will pull the latest changes from git repo build the app and create docker image out of it and finally push those changes on to the docker hub on to the same pipeline we have configured on how to take the changes from the docker hub and push the changes on to the prod or dev servers so that applications are accessible to the end users i hope now you are all clear with the devops workflow in real time do let me know any questions in comment section thank you so much now comes the most interesting time of the video where we will announce the winner from yesterday instagram push actually most of you were right but the two answers which i liked are from yes and nibas thank you all again and happy learning